This is Tony, Tony Lafrano, interviewing Clement W. Madsen, Doctor of Social Work, May 10, 1993. Dr. Madsen, have you been the subject of other interviews on the same or related subjects? Uh, no, I don't feel so. The only interview that I've had that would closely resemble would be an interview with the Shanti organization, that's S-H-A-N-T-I, concerned with patients with HIV and AIDS. Uh, and that was fairly extensive, but that's the only one I can think of. During that interview, did you provide any material, or, or uh, was there anything written or documented as a result of that conversation with the Shanti people? Uh, no, I do not believe that there was. It was basically uh, to get some ideas of my attitude and feeling toward the organization, the positive feelings or negative feelings which I might have. Good. Okay, well then, thank you. I was just asking that so that if there was materials, we were wondering if you would share those materials also with, with the organization. I might add that it really was kind of a, a, a part of a study uh, by which you're going to ask other people involved in the organization and then bring the material together. But uh, what the outcome was, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, while we're talking about materials, Dr. Matson, uh, do you still have, by chance, in your personal files, materials uh, from your early career in social work or your most recent career, uh, and your reports, documents, uh, papers that you've written, uh, you know, uh, anything of that nature? Uh, not really. I have a tendency, which now I understand isn't too good a tendency, of rather throwing things out when I no longer have any use for them. So I don't feel that I really have anything in the past. I'm the type of person that kind of forgets the past. I'm interested in the present and the future, good or bad. Okay, then. Well, let's start at the beginning, Dr. Manson. What circumstances led you into social work as a profession? Uh, uh, in World War II, while in the service, I was in the medical corps, and during that time, uh, several of the doctors were very impressed with me and felt that I would make an excellent doctor. Uh, so they did give me various recommendations and also outline the things that I had done. Uh, I entered USC, and USC, with the material I had been given, uh, gave me a credit for one semester of work. So I had a complete uh, one semester's credit. Um, however, uh, I had a great deal of difficulty in the area of chemistry, which had a lot of mathematics, which I'm rather poor at. And no matter what I did, I would struggle like mad to hit even a B minus. Well, to get into medical school, it was pretty evident that I wouldn't be able to really make it. Uh, my wife was a social worker. I'll admit that I was never very impressed with social workers, but uh, my wife was, and to me, uh, women were social workers, period. However, I did meet uh, a uh, gentleman, uh, a David Prever, who uh, had been in social work for years. I was very impressed with him, so I finally decided I might try it. So at that point, uh, uh, after my graduation uh, from college, I uh, was admitted to UCLA School of Social Welfare. I went over there mainly because at the time, UCLA was supposed to be new, dynamic, doing marvelous things for the future, and so I thought that's the only place for me to be. However, uh, after a year there, I found out that it was dynamic, but unfortunately they would try a program and before they'd have more than six or eight months on it, they decided it was no good and they'd just uh, toss it out. So I did leave at the end of my first year and I went to work for two years with the county uh, at, with a certificate. Of, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was interested in medical social work at that time. So I worked for about, oh, about eight months at General Hospital in admissions. And uh, from there, I went to the tuberculosis sanatorium in San Fernando Valley. And I worked there for about a year and a half, after which time I did enroll in the uh, uh, second, uh, my second uh, year of uh, School of Social Work at USC. 
and then one of the question. I went way back. Uh, Dr. Matson, uh, when you went back to the School of Social Work, at that time, did you make up your mind as to what field of study you were interested in? Were you going into group work or community organization or casework or because of your medical experience, did you focus on medical social work? Yeah. Uh, yes, I did focus really basically on medical uh, social work, although at that point, uh, the uh, field was veering away from medical social work, psychiatric social work, and so forth, and going into a program by which all social workers are trained in a way that they could do anything, which sometimes I have question over. Uh, however, I uh, uh, did uh, focus on working with the individuals. At that time, it tended to be more or less on the psychoanalytic framework which I never quite bought, being by nature a pragmatist and more or less going more toward the idea of, uh, of um, uh, behavior, behavioristic uh, type of social work approach. Um, so basically, I was interested in, again, having worked with doctors for so very long, having their particular, also really in the beginning wanted to be a doctor. I begin to realize that perhaps if I, as a social worker, with the training of a social worker, could work in the medical setting, therefore satisfying both needs, that of, let's say, the medical and also of the social. Well, then, you got through graduate school at USC. Could you now share with us um, a brief rundown of the positions that social work you, you had from when you left uh, USC uh, maybe share with us some of the kinds of activities you have been involved in, uh, especially those that relate to the health and welfare programs or, you know, social welfare policy. Uh, yes. Uh, after I left um, in 19... Well, it's interesting. I guess I should back up just a little bit. Uh, I was interested with Mr. Prever having worked with the mentally ill for such a long period of time. I became rather interested in that particular field. So what I did during the summer, uh, I worked at the Brentwood Hospital as an aide, working directly with the various mental, uh, uh, mentally disturbed uh, veterans. And I found this rather fascinating. I, I really was interested in what could be done or could not be done. So after I got my uh, master's degree, I applied to the state of California to work uh, at uh, Camarillo State Hospital. Uh, at Camarillo State Hospital, uh, I, of course, at this point, felt that I practically knew everything, obviously. But I was rather startled because those days, and I'm talking now about 1953, is when I started as a psychiatric social worker at the Camarillo State Hospital. It was rather a shocker because they had uh, a, uh, a section which was kind of for the uh, uh, more treatable uh, mentally ill people. But then they had this enormous groups of people, thousands of people, who really were no more treatable, they felt, but rather that they could be kind of cared for very nicely in various wards. I found myself with a caseload of 750 people they were all in the men's wards. Uh, at that point, I began to realize there was a limit what I could do, so I began to focus upon families. Whenever any family would visit or I'd find out, I would immediately see them and try to help them whatever way I could in relation to their particular feelings or mixed feelings and all this type of thing, which actually rather fascinated me in working with families more than the mentally ill. There was one man, however, who did come up to me very, very disturbed, and he said he had terrible, terrible pains in his head, and he just couldn't stand anymore. And when I talked to the nurse, the nurse explained that he was always complaining, he was always a problem. I was not satisfied with this. So finally I went to the doctor and I said, I think he should be very closely examined with a pain in the head. The doctor didn't feel it was necessary. At which time, my being rather, I suppose, difficult or whatever kind of person I happen to be, I told him, well, if he did not do something about checking this man's uh, physical. physical condition, I was going to go to the head of the hospital. 
at which time he says, you'll be fired, at which time it says, well, forget it, fire me. Well, they did take him up, and they found out they had a cancer of the brain inoperable, and he was dead in three days. So it was after that point in time, I begin to realize, well, family is important, but then you have to keep this balance, leave the patients too, and also beginning to realize that mentally ill people at least should be listened to, and then should take whatever physical exams or whatever was needed to go and see if there's a problem. What? What, uh, Dr. Matson, did, did you feel were the pressing mental health issues at that time, uh, you know, at Camarillo? You stated already that you felt that there was insufficient attention to patient care. Were there other issues as well? Uh, well, uh, I think mainly was the problem a limitation on, on uh, let's say, care. Uh, there was the problem of, well, there was another thing too at that time. If a patient became disturbed, they just, the doctor had written uh, in the deal that he should have a shock therapy uh, PRN when it was necessary. So if he became disturbed, the aides would just drag him in and give him a shock therapy. I mean, it was just boom, boom, boom. It was that. To me, I thought it was absolutely horrible. And I suppose at this point, the state would probably sue me. <laughs> For the statement, but it basically was true. However, what was interesting was that uh, it would became it became tremendously costly keeping all these people in this particular setting, and also there was an idea that in a way it was inhuman and that de definitely more should be done. So at the time when I was there, they were talking about the possibility of a lot of these people being able to live in the community. Well, there was an interesting program. It was very successful. It was under the old uh, Bureau of Social Work. And the Bureau of Social Work program had a program for family care placement. Now, with these, they would carefully come in for a patient who seemed that he could live in the community, and they'd get a good picture of him and his particular needs. And then in the community, they would have various community placements uh, where they could match up the uh, community care uh, uh, heads with the patient. It was a tremendously successful program, but obviously it was fairly costly because it had to be paid for by the state. Uh, then in later years, and this was after I was no longer with them, there was a wonderful program, which I was 100% behind, which the California felt that what they really needed to do was take these people in the hospitals, take them out into the community, and there have mental hygiene clinics that would give them care and help them in homes and so forth. Uh, I think it was the Petrus Bill, as I call, recall, and I was tremendously impressed. In fact, all of us in social workers were tremendously impressed. However, we did empty the hospitals, but unfortunately, very limited in the development of the outpatient clinic. Hence, today, you see so many mentally ill people, old men, all ages, wandering around from street to street corner, sleeping in, in corners. I, I mean, it, 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 to me, it was a terrible thing because the idea was good, but the money did not come out to support these people in the community. After leaving Camarillo, I was very, very anxious really to get the Veterans Administration. And uh, I found out that they were building a, 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 a supposed to be a hospital, in fact, breaking ground here in uh, uh, the valley, San Fernando Valley. And uh, so I made an application with the idea of being able to work there. Uh, downtown at the uh, outpatient clinic, they were quite interested in my application. I did work downtown and outpatient for about, oh, I guess around a year and a half. It's hard really for me to know at that particular point in time. Oh, it must have been about a year, I imagine. And I got a lot of satisfaction out of that because I would get notifications from the uh, VA hospitals, either from Brentwood, where the mentally ill were, that a man was going to be returned to the family which made it possible for me to make house visits, to visit the family, help them with their fears, with their particular anxieties. And then when the man did come, I could help them handle the behavior in relation to him 
and able to handle his own hostility and affairs. I really had a year of great satisfaction out in the field, working with the mentally ill and their families. Hmm. What, what did you find uh, most gratifying, personally or professionally, about that particular job at the VA? I, th I, I think what it had a meaning. It was an amazing doing uh, a field work type of thing out in homes. You went actually into the homes of the mentally ill? All, all of my, uh, my work there for that year was into the homes. And there you could get the whole picture of the home. You could find out who was a real dominant member, who wasn't a dominant member. You could see when you would go in how chairs were placed by which a dominant member who was in control could be mother, could be father. But those days, of course, we all believed in the idea of poor mom being completely responsible for all degree of mental illness, which means, of course, I'm sure I was influenced somehow by that. But it was interesting because uh, the placement of a chair with a certain woman who's kind of a matriarch, and it is true, I do feel that a lot of the mentally ill sons were uh, almost afraid of their mothers, really. I can't blame the mother, though, because I think now with mental illness, uh, I, I do think it's a chemical thing now more than it is uh, a physical thing, more than it is really a psychological thing, actually. But my real satisfaction was working with people in their homes and seeing how they live. And you know what? There's such a difference between working in a home where people are comfortable, this is their turf, than then coming into an office where it's your turf. You don't want it to be that way, but the reality is it is. In retrospect, would, would you say that that treatment modality uh, is much more superior to than what we're doing today with mental health patients? Yes, I really do think it is, because we do not have the staffs, we do not have the monies, we do not have really to do that type of thing. It really isn't done. Mm -hmm. And so I do feel that a great deal is lost, because I remember, I, God, I mean, the amount of people I was able to help keep out of the hospital, and not only myself, other people who were working in the field, the Bureau of Social Work for the state, hel helping people out, and they too, at times, if a person was placed with a family, they would work out into the family. The old Bureau of Social Work absolutely been wiped out. It no longer exists. It was too expensive. Were there any obstacles that you encountered during that first year of professional social work? I don't really feel that there were really any obstacles that I can really recall. Um, I got great satisfaction out of it. I felt that uh, my immediate supervisor, who was Anita Mackey, a marvelous woman, she's a black woman, was a Seventh-day Adventist, she's still a very close friend, and uh, I enjoyed her so very, very much. And, uh, oh yes, too, I did forget that while I was there, I started taking students for field work training from the uh, uh, USC School of Social Work. That was back, uh, my goodness, I didn't realize it was that far back, but it really was. It was back in 19, uh, that was in 1954, 1954 and 1955. So that was my beginning of the training of students for USC. Hmm. What strategies did you use or were you involved with to accomplish some of the goals that your agency or you personally sought in your treatment? Well. Of course, I very quickly dropped the psychoanalytical theory in a hurry uh, and moved into behaviorism. Uh, I am not knocking the psychoanalytic theory. I think it's wonderful to have us like, understand people, understand their behavior, understand this. I think this is very good. But when it comes to treatment, one has to work from day to day, from situation to situation. The analytic theory was you would sit down and you'd talk to people and you'd find out some about their background and so forth with the idea that somehow that uh, uh, as they begin to understand themselves better, everything would work out. Well, of course, this doesn't make it very sense because one is not ever in a vacuum. So what one suffers about last week has nothing to do with what's happening right now. And so with me, I moved into the now, the, now, period. 
And as I moved along, it was working fine because the School of Social Work began to blend analytical theory for knowledge and begin to more behavioristic, so that began to move along. So I felt very, very comfortable in relation to that. Okay. Dr. Matson, uh, getting back to the original question I asked you now, uh, you brought us up through your, your social work training and you brought us up through your first years at the VA in the outpatient clinic. Did you stay with the Veterans Administration? What were the next years? Um, where, where did you spend the rest of your career in social work? Yeah, actually, the rest of my career in social work was in where I'd originally wanted to be, was in the Sepulveda VA Hospital in uh, San Fernando Valley. And that really basically was the rest of my career. I started there in 57 um, to 50. It's interesting. You know, I'd kind of forgotten it. I went there in 55 to 57, two years, and then I wanted desperately to get back into the homes of people, so I left there and went back for a little over a year to the regional office where I could work with families in their particular homes. Then, starting in 1958, I became a training coordinator at Social Work Service of Paul the Veterans Administration, by which I trained the students, but I also trained staff. I also trained uh, residents, psych psychiatric residents. And then in 1968, I left uh, and went to University of Southern California to work my doctoral degree. Uh, then, uh, after I come back with my doctoral degree, which was so oh, wonderful, but all of a sudden I found out, <laughs> really, were no jobs of any type that I really wanted for a doctoral degree in social work. As far as academic training in the, this always bored me. Academic training, I didn't like. I like action. I like working with people. I like doing things. Well, for a doctoral degree, it didn't really exist. However, Sepulveda VA Hospital, God bless them, were absolutely delighted if I would come back, and they offered me to come back at a substantial raise in my salary, and I went back to, uh, the, uh, to the hospital there in VA in the Veterans Administration in Sepulveda, and there I continued to work really in training, training of, school, of, uh, of uh, uh, students from USC, Last two years that I was there, gosh, I can't remember the date that was, uh, I uh, had, uh, uh, each year I had a doctoral student, which was paid for by the VA, and uh, I enjoyed that very, very much. So basically I was tied in training, but I always, no matter what I did in the administrative line, the training line, I always had several clients that I worked with. In fact, there was one young man and his family. I worked for eight years. He was a hopeless case. He was definitely consigned to nothing. But I worked for eight years. I worked for the family. Now he's working. He has a family, has a child. Everything's marvelous. But all of a sudden came through to me, my God and heaven above, if we could have people who could work eight years with a se severely disturbed man, a on drugs, uh, uh, schizophrenic when he was young, I suddenly realized that no way do we have the staff or we'll ever have the staff that we can do this. But I now found enough time, enough energy, enough love, enough giving. Really, there's nothing that couldn't be done. So what... Uh, so Dr. Matson, after you... Uh, you got your doctor degree, and then you continued to work at the Veterans Administration then until you retired in 1978, is that correct? 1978. Okay, well, that, that's very interesting. I'd like to change the questions a little, and like maybe if I could get you to remember a little bit about, you know, what the social welfare climate was during that tenure that you worked as a social worker at the Veterans Hospital. And maybe one of the first questions would be, um, were there any social movements or activities that you were involved with that seemed to you important but did not lead to the goals you wanted to attain? I don't know whether I'd be ashamed of it or whatever, but the reality, I was never involved in any type of a social movement. Uh, 
I was always in concern with what could I personally do with the people that I could help. Uh, the idea of social movements, trying to help people that beyond my particular grasp, uh, never really appealed to me. Uh, I always felt that somehow what I could do one-to-one -one or collectively with people could... Oh, I've got this crazy idea in a way, I suppose, is the idea of a drop of water in a pool. You drop of water in a pool and it fans out kind of in a circle. And I've always felt somehow if I can have a positive influence, that that influence will kind of go out in kind of like a circle and that somehow that will be helpful to the human condition. So as far as any big movements are concerned, they never interested me. Okay. If you can reflect back on your years at the Veterans Administration Hospital, are there any outstanding successes that come to mind that you would like to share with uh, social workers uh, just beginning their careers today? W were there anything uh, that you could suggest uh, that you tried that was totally wrong or totally great or, you know, something that, um, you know, you, you look back now and say, that was terrific, and I wish I would have taken time to write about that or share it with that or, or anything like that. I have to think. Are you ready? I, well, yeah, I think I just uh, uh, kind of mentioned the idea of working with a man for eight years and now seeing him through a marriage of the birth of a child and all of this. Uh, and now he lives in, uh, oh, God, how many years ago was it? He lives in uh, uh, Utah, and he, he phones me about once every, well, maybe six months, see how I'm doing, and so forth and so on. And at that, through that experience, I found out that there's no end to what we could do if we had the ability to do it. Now, uh, this means the idea of certain selectivity, because in social work, if we're working with people, we have to be realistic. We cannot absolutely be successful in helping everybody. So we have to kind of selectively pick out certain people that we might be able to really involve ourselves to help. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe three. Because, and what is it? Maybe it's a certain something that we have that somehow clicks with this other person and clicks with us and we don't know what that's all about we really don't know so I would say if we accept the reality we cannot help everybody but we sell uh, the, the idea that we can somehow be selective with certain people and throw all our energies in that particular person uh, I would say um, one thing I'm very proud of and I really impressed with uh, yeah. Yeah, you don't hear me, I'm sure. But anyhow, is that um, with the USC and the Veterans Administration, I did for a while have a double role. In fact, I had the double role for quite a few years. And that was that I, with the USC, represented all of the Southern California uh, VA training programs with USC. What did those entail, Dr. Manson? Well, I had two hats. It was very an interesting type of thing because I would evaluate the VA programs for USC. And at the same time, I would go to the various programs and help them improve their particular uh, training. Now, it's Washington, D.C. said that this basically is impossible. There's no way that we could have one person <laughs> do evaluation from USC while at the same time um, be critical, positively or negatively, with the VA programs for training. However, I don't remember who it was, said uh, Clem can do it, and uh, I did do it. And it was wonderful. There was no resentment on the part of any of my colleagues here in Southern California that had pro pro programs. 
uh, I wrote uh, out their evaluation, sent them into USC, also sent them into uh, Washington, D.C. And it was kind of a uh, um, two-headed type of thing. It was, basically, it was almost virtually impossible, but it worked. And I felt so wonderful now, I often wondered why it worked. I guess I still do. But I think it was one of my great feelings of, of real success. Uh, as far as ideas of where maybe I could have improved or maybe I could have done things differently, it's an interesting question because I suppose it's almost a frightening question. I generally have no trouble in finding out where I might have been wrong or did something wrong. Well, I, I, I think there was one thing, is that I wanted to be the chief of family, uh, pardon me, <laughs> chief of uh, Sepulveda de VA Hospital. And I remember I am, was older at the time, and uh, I, the head of the hospital, wanted very much for me to be there. But the chief of staff at the time called me in, and he said, how many years do you think you've got left? And I looked at him and I said, I have the remotest idea, but I want the job. And uh, it went to a younger man, and it really was very upsetting. However, I still have the satisfaction of all I had done in relation to training, working with people. Uh, right now, I feel a little vicious. Here's this man wondering how many years I had left, and two years later he died of cancer. I'm sorry, but he did. And I hate to say it, but I think I had a sneaking feeling of, well, it was a hell of a question, wasn't it? That's an interesting example, Dr. Manson. Um, would you say that that example pretty much characterized the way uh, promotions and jobs were awarded? Was there age discrimination in your time, do you feel? How old were you at the time? It's going to be, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, there wasn't really edge discrimination, I didn't feel, as far as the agency was concerned. I think there was in relation to this one person who didn't really want me, uh, and I'm not clear as to why not. Uh, however, the reality is there was a chief of psychiatry who'd come in, who was supposed to be great guns, and he was all for research. And when I talked to him, I said, look, I, I have nothing against research, and I have a doctoral degree, which gave me some training in relation to research. But, but I do not feel that at this point that what social work does or doesn't do, I'm not too sure it's researchable right now. And I think that chief of psychiatry influenced the chief of staff because a young man they hired, they said, he, oh, he was going to do marvelous things in research. Oh, there's no end to what he was going to do in research. They hired him. Just on a, on a side, I must point out that it is now 15 years later and he still has done no research. But again, I think what you have in any field is at this point, this is more important than, let's say, another point. Mm -hmm. And uh, one other thing I was involved in there, which, which took a tremendous lot of energy, and that was at the, uh, just oh, about sub, a couple, several year, couple years before I left, uh, we had the, uh, um, um, turn it on. I, there was affirmative action. It was always very, very difficult, really. And the affirmative action, I was made chairman of the affirmative action committee, and uh, it was a roughie. Uh, I had it for about three years, and I was able to handle these problems quite well, and that was another reason why that the uh, head of the hospital was very impressed with me, because she felt I was doing the impossible. And sometimes looking back, I almost think it's true. But my training as a social worker, understanding both situations and trying to get a balance and understanding, it really did pay off there. So I think social work is a great advantage. Okay. Did, uh, 
I, I think I want to ask you again about the treatment of veterans during your tenure at the Veterans Hospital. As you recall or reflect on it, uh, earlier you told us about the shock treatments and what appears or allegedly was inhumane treatment at Camarillo. Were there similar experiences of the treatment of veterans in the hospital uh, that you observed at that time that maybe are still evident today or at least have been changed and corrected? No, I, by the time I hit that VA hospital, uh, by this time the shock therapy is pretty well discredited. Now what they might have done before I arrived, I don't know. And I would say that the treatment of the VA um, uh, patient, absolutely excellent. At that point, staff-wise, there wasn't as much emphasis really on working with, let's say, families in the beginning. In fact, I remember that uh, when I would have a family that obviously needed kind of a long-term type of a, of a report or something, which I couldn't give, I always referred them to Family Service of Los Angeles because I had always been told that they would work for a long-term relationship and therapy. And so I always used them as a resource constantly. But as things moved on, we began to more and more work with family relationship between families and uh, with, the, uh, with the mentally ill. And I, actually, with the VA hospital, I was always very comfortable in relation to what they were doing. Never was, were they limited in the sense of the state. At that time, was the VA hospital uh, advocating collaborative treatment with other organizations, or was it pretty much an insulated treatment plan? I think it was pretty well an insulated, really, treatment plan. Uh, except what social work would do. We might refer to have a child to go to a mental health clinic because we didn't handle it. Uh, we could do various referrals, basically through social work. As far as medicine was concerned, it was all within the system. And uh, uh, I, if there was any, any criticism, of which I say I don't have it, was in the area of uh, Research. Interesting enough, I was on the research committee at the hospital, uh, not in social work, but the overall research committee deal. And I used to be absolutely completely thrown because they would come up with some idea of a wonderful new research in medicine or in psychology or whatever. And I would be completely thrown. I would listen to the whole thing and then I'd ask if they checked the other uh, VA hospitals to find out if like research was being done. They looked at me blankly as if I was completely insane because they were interested in their own particular research program and they didn't, to me, look into what's being done in the other VA hospitals. So that's the, I would say, the only criticism at the time. And then, of course, all of a sudden the VA didn't have the money, so they cut down research, and so it goes. Okay. Uh, I was just thinking maybe I ought to have a... Uh, Matson. Uh, You've discussed pretty much your professional career. Have you been involved in any volunteer work uh, during that same period of time? Well, uh, after I left the uh, resigned from the Veteran Administration, I was 62 years of age, and uh, my uh, wife and I, for about five years, had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time uh, taking trips. However, after leaving the VA, I did have about five private clients uh, who kind of were indirectly, not, I didn't take them from the VA, but indirectly they knew about me. And so I worked with them. And during that time, my wife and I also took very good uh, trips. But uh, about five years later, I was 67, my wife died very suddenly, and I suddenly realized I could not handle clients without either a backup of a hospital or a backup of, frankly, my wife emotionally. So bit by bit, I kind of uh, terminated them very carefully and, and a couple of referred them to another, uh, someone else. So for a while, I grieved. Uh, and then I began to realize I'm supposed to do something. So I uh, kind of returned to a church I wasn't at for 40 years. And uh, I begin to feel what needs to be done and uh, what not. And I suddenly realized that, well, there are people out in West Valley who needed food. And so bit by bit, I toyed around with the idea, could we start a program 
by I knew no one church could handle it because I started a program bringing in various churches that together because we did have the resource in, in a very large kitchen if I could bring them together and we could all work together in harmony to help people well it was very interesting I sent ten letters to ten churches and I received five response and they came with the meeting they were interested and bit by bit was able to get this going uh, Although I dropped out from the program after six years, at this point, well, no, before I left, I had uh, uh, six Protestant churches and a temple, and a marvelous program, about 135 volunteers, the money that we needed all came in, and we always have had at least uh, plus, when I finally left, was about 700 plus uh, families. Uh, coming uh, for food and we gave them enough food to last for a five day period for the entire family and uh, if they're careful it could be seven days anyhow tremendously successful program and it was so successful that I became horribly bored so at that point I decided I had to do something I didn't know what it was and I thought well I've been feeding people taking care of their bodies which is important what could I possibly do that might be a little closer to social work? I, I didn't want to somehow do social work per se. I wanted something different. And all of a sudden I began to realize, oh goodness, there's people dying of AIDS. There's uh, uh, this program, programs that are someplace and HIV and all that bit. And I thought maybe I can help out there. So um, I got heard about a program called Shanti, S-H-A-N-T-I, and I uh, took a very extensive training program for them, uh, for them, which was uh, Saturday and Sunday all day from 8 till 8 for two days, and uh, I took the program, it was very, very rough, and then they did give me a man who had a, well, he had HIV, not AIDS yet, and I would see him and try to help him what way I could. Uh, finally, he did get into full-blown AIDS. I'd take him to the vet, uh, to the uh, hospital in uh, 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 general hospital, and spend three or four hours when they give blood transfusions and whatnot. And I worked with him, and finally got very for about eight months. It got very bad, and his family did come from the east, and I was able there to work um, with the family. And it was it's a an, an very amazing experience. Uh, uh, I'll never forget the brother uh, who came, real macho guy. Oh, God, was he macho. And uh, I met him, and I met the mother and the father. Uh, m the boy was, uh, he was about 29, was dying. And all of a sudden, the young brother said, want to take a walk with me? So I said, okay, let's go. So we went to the walk. And we walked about a couple blocks, he started crying. He did not know that his brother who was dying was gay, he had no idea. And he started crying because about a month before, a buddy and he had, had just literally, quote, beat the hell out of this bag. And he was very upset. At which time I talked to him and I said, look, Buster, uh, what you did in the past is not important. What's important, have you learned anything now? Do you want to change? And uh, I, I do feel I was very, very helpful. But I did have to go all the way into Hollywood. It's real rough. So I told Shanti that I ha they'd have to give me somebody in the valley. And then I, uh, I did get a young man, uh, and I worked with him for about four months before he died. Uh, I also volunteering for the Disney Nurses Association. Uh, and uh, I go and visit a hospice a couple times a week. We we're discussing volunteer experiences, and Dr. Matson was just finishing up telling us about his experience uh, with AIDS, uh, hospice work, etc. Uh, Dr. Matson, will you continue to tell us about your experiences as a volunteer? Um, yeah, actually, when I was with the Veterans Administration, uh, yeah, a veteran administration does encourage you, you know, if you have a good position, uh, to become involved in any volunteer work. And uh, I don't remember who it was, but it was someone I knew quite well, and they wanted me to be with the 
uh, Family Service of Los Angeles uh, 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 advisory, advisory Council in San Fernando Valley. So I did, and I was with it about a year. I found it very, very, very interesting, and I enjoyed it a great deal. And then after about a year, I was made chairman of the council, and I was really quite involved. And actually, we were very successful. We raised quite a bit of money with all kind of affairs. We had two big uh, uh, motion picture affairs, and uh, we also, at the Doheny Mansion, had another big affair there, and we really did very, very well. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was very, very, very nice. And as a chairman of a advisory committee, I was also automatically on the Board of Family Service of Los Angeles. So uh, uh, um, when I left the VA, I automatically kind of found myself as, as chair as being on a Board of Family Service. And looking back, it's very difficult for me to remember how many years I was involved in, in family service, but I was very, very involved with family service, um, which I really enjoyed very much, and I felt I was able to make quite a contribution. Uh, and uh, that, I felt, was kind of one of my highlights, too, of a continued, because I was involved in many committees. I was on the executive committee. I was also, for a while, on the... Um, um, oh, oh goodness, let's see what can be jotted down. Yeah, I was involved many, many, many committees really on it. Uh, as I mentioned, I guess, before the personnel committee, which I was very involved in. I was also chairman of the search committee when we lost our, chair, our uh, uh, um, CEO at the time. I had another CEO. I found that very, very, very satisfactory. And uh, a chairman, I was in the st strategic planning committee, uh, on the uh, uh, fundraising committee. Uh, I, I really, it's difficult for me to list, let's say, all of them, but I, I, I was, and I was very involved, and I enjoyed it really a great deal. Uh, so all I can say is that as long as I manage at my tender age of on May 25th, I want you to know I'll be 79, I'm still going to do everything I can in the community and try to do what's possible, and who knows. Well, it sounds like you've had quite a history, Dr. Matson, and having been aware of some of your work at Family Service, I can concur that you did an outstanding job and was even um, chair of the board for two years, which you failed to mention, and have been on on the state councils of family service and an active participant in Family Service America nationally as well. What is your view about measures that um, social work professionals, can, or what kind of measures can social work professionals undertake to affect programs or policies um, that could be more effective if they got behind them. It's difficult for me to answer that because as I tended to say, I'm not too interested really in the broad scope, let's say, uh, in let's say that type of broad change. I, I guess basically I'm a grassroots type of person. Uh, I feel that what I can do in a one-to-one -one or one-to-two, one-to-three relationship hopefully will, let's say, expand into, let's say, something. However, in many ways, I suppose in the changes through the years, I don't, I don't think I'm that happy about social work. I'll tell you why. When I became a social worker, Social workers thought in terms of helping people, doing everything that they could possibly do. We never thought of overtime, so we worked an hour or two extra, so what? If we were doing something, we were helping people. As the years have gone on, that has changed. It, it has changed to the point of, I don't know, are we becoming, um, let's say, secretaries or something, kind of nine to five? 
I find that social workers at 15 to 5 are very careful that they're getting things all worked out so they can put on their track shoes and go tearing out at 5 o'clock. I can't understand that. I really have difficulty understanding that. Uh, I also feel that we're concerned with our own bureaucracy. We have become bureaucratic like every other organization, which I don't accept in social work. Like for instance, right now, if we were interested in people, we would begin to work together to determine which organizations can best help people in certain areas. No. We as an organization want to be say we can help everybody, whether they're children, whether they're old, whether they're young, whether they're alcoholic, whether they have the AIDS, whether they have whatever. We can handle everything. And I don't believe that. I really don't. I think each one of our various organizations, if we'd work together and say, look, you could handle this better than us. I'm going back, I think I'm going back to the idea of, is it true that social workers can handle everything? Can they be psychiatric? Can they be medical? Can they be clinical? Can they be uh, child? Can they be family? Can they be everything? I don't think that's true. I myself could never work with children under any circumstances. So I very carefully worked it out so I don't work with children. Now, I don't feel that I'm less capable because I can't, I just face the reality. I can't work with children. And I said, I just get irritated. I really get irritated with this. Well, I think, I think your, your comments and observations of social workers in your day and what you feel social workers are today, um, it really is a difference. And that would lead to, it's a nice segue into the question I was going to ask you, and that was, uh, what significant changes have you observed between social work practice when you started and social work practice today? And I think you've kind of already commented on that. Uh, is there anything you want to add? I don't think there's anything to add, except somehow. So, you know, I remember way back when I first was with my wife, who was a social worker. And she, I, uh, social workers used to be idealists. And I remember she said, oh, the work of social worker is for us to work so social work is no longer needed. In short, work ourselves out of business. That is no more. Now it is, what can we do in social work that builds us up? Where can we get more money? What can we do here? What can we do there? I don't know. There's something lost, and I don't know what it is lost. I will say this. After World War II, when I went to USC, as I mentioned way back in the beginning of this interview, I mentioned that uh, I wanted to go out and help people. And I would go around to various men, and there really were all men that I remember going into medical, uh, into uh, undergraduate work of medicine. I said, what are you getting into that? Man, that's where the money is. I didn't hear anybody say, I'm going because I want to help people. And you know what? It upset me horrible at the time. And now I'm almost as set as I was back after World War II in 1946. Thank you, Dr. Matson. <clears throat> um, I guess to sum up or, or to finalize, I'd just like to ask you one last question. Uh, well, actually two. Uh, if you had to sum up your entire social work career, is there any one special incident or act or activity uh, that uh, you feel uh, you would want to be most remembered for? Hmm. Uh, that's kind of an interesting question. I think maybe, I can't quite answer it, but I will say this, I feel that social work, if it survives, will only survive if it has heart. Now, when you sit down to a client, do you love him or her or don't you? And without that, there is nothing else. Well, thank you very much. 
the last question I had was I was wondering, Doctor, if you had any personal papers or pamphlets or dissertations or anything that you might want to make available to, to researchers and others, uh, other scholars um, that you would be willing to contribute to the Social Welfare Archives Project. You recall that uh, the Social Welfare Archives Project is housed in the Arlene Johnson Social Work Library at USC and it's part of the California Social Welfare Heritage Activity to collect, preserve, and make appropriate items available to scholars in the humanities and social sciences. And we thank you for your sharing of some of your background and early years in, in veterans administration work as a social worker and uh, would like to have any materials you might want to share with us uh, if you would so agree. Do you have such materials? Well, yeah, in a way, maybe not in a way. But uh, I've never been much for writing, and I know friends have pushed me and pushed me and pushed me, but for some reason or other, I just can't. They keep saying, all you have to do is just talk. But I don't know, I can't do it. But I would say this, all right, my dissertation that I did for at USC, and it is, of course, in the USC library, is my California state regulation of family care homes for the mentally ill and historical inquiry. Now, I think in it, what is important is that there I feel the careful study way back from when a family, uh, family um, care for the mentally ill started way, way back in Belgium to now. I think it outlines the importance of people being placed in homes with loving people who care for them against a program which says you place people in homes because they have the right amount of toilets, the amount spout of space, the amount of screens in the windows. But what's important is are the people where they mentally ill placed able to love them? So I would like to leave that. It's probably, I feel, one of the best things I've ever done. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Manson. We certainly appreciate your taking your time today to share your thoughts and observations with us of your social work career. This concludes the interview with Dr. Clement Matson. Uh, um, age 78, uh, soon to be 79, on May 25th, 1993. Uh, today's date is May 10th, 1993. Uh, Tony Lafrano, interview, signing off.